celebrating the power of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Zenobia Dobson, part two. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and these are great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. So this week, we move into part two of my interview with Zenobia Dobson. 14 seasons, well over 350 shows. I haven't had many moments like this. There are moments where you learn about a person's history, their life. But when you learn about their faith, when you learn about their courage, and when you see that it's something beyond what they could have learned or earned themselves, it's one of those special, almost divine moments. That's what we shared. We actually started with the birth of a son. Do you remember when Xavion was born? Yes. Tell me about that day. Wow. <laughs> well, that day, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I ever asked you about that. No. Well, that day he was born, I had a doctor's appointment, and uh, I just thought I was going for a checkup. And the nurse told me, she was like, Miss Dobson, we're gonna have to keep you. Call your family and tell them that you're staying today. And I was like, wow. She said, you're gonna have your baby today. And I was like, whoa, she said, he's his weight is really heavy, and you're going to have to go on and have your baby. So I was like, oh my gosh, I got nervous. <clears throat> and then at the same time, I just started praying, God, you know, just bless us. And so I just prayed and prayed. They listened to his heartbeat, of course, and it was the same as, as mine. And I was like, wow, that's so wonderful. That is so wonderful. And as I went into procedure to have it done, they just kept telling me, you know, whatever it is, it's got a lot of hair. <laughs> so you didn't know it was a boy. I didn't know it was a boy. Right. I didn't want to know. When he came out, he weighed 10 pounds. Wow. Big boy. And I was like, wow, it was just so amazing to me. And just to look at him, he was just big and healthy. You could and feel his spirit immediately, couldn't you? Absolutely. And to just see him, I was like, wow, beautiful. Do you remember <clears throat> first steps? Yes, yes. I was at work one time and I came home and Xavion was waiting on me in the street <laughs> just to show me that he could walk. <laughs> wow. Yes, he was waiting. He had his heart bottoms on, his Buster Browns. <laughs> it's right, <dry> right. <laughs> and they had bells on them. Wow. And I still have his shoes. I still have his shoes. You his... remember, do you remember his first bike? Yes, I remember his first bike. He, he liked trucks. He said, that's a big, big truck. We would ride on the interstate. He said, there goes the big, big trucks. And he liked trucks at first. And he loved riding bikes. Him and his brother, they loved riding bikes. You remember first grade? Yes, yes. You remember what he wore? I don't remember what he wore, but I remember taking him to school and he was so excited about going to first grade. When he left Sam Hill, he had to go to Lonsdale, but his teach, one of his teachers, <clears throat> it was time for Xavion to, you know, graduate. And uh, she said that uh, Xavion started to cry. And she was like, oh, Xavion, we're going to miss each other. We're going to miss each other. But she said, Xavion was crying for the bear that was in the classroom. And so when he passed away, she brought the bear that he was crying for. Wow. When he was transferring wow. to the elementary school. Wow. Yes. Do you remember um, his first Christmas that, yes. that he remembered? Oh, yes. I remember his first Christmas. He, um, he couldn't open his gifts, so his brother Zach helped him open his gifts. And 
he was like, <laughs> he, he was excited about getting in a truck. And then I bought him a football. Mm -hmm. And it was a small football. But I bought him one because his brother had one. And he would always want to play with his brother's football. And, you know, brothers, sometimes they be selfish and don't want them to play. So Xavion had his own. And he was like, wow, I got my football. And he began, when he opened up his, opened up his presents and his football, he just really liked his football. He was, was like, because that's what he wanted. And he throwed his ball a lot, just tossed it up in the air, catching it himself. And um, then his friends, they would play and throw football all the time. So he got strong with throwing, throwing his ball. Now, all the time you're watching every stage of his life, because you have great expectations, hopes, and intentions for him. And when you see him get the ball and you see that he's playing with his friends, what, what are you seeing in his future? I'm just seeing that my son, he will have a vision for something. Don't really know what it is, but I would like for him to find his vision. So, you know, I gave him choices of things that he would like doing. And I knew that sooner or later he would make his own choice about what he liked. Yeah, this was one of the most emotional interviews that I've ever done. I mean, it, it moved me to my core. So I want you to see the rest of it. She was very determined about her son having a purpose to match his passion. And he found that. When we come back, you'll find a young man with a purpose. This is Anything is Possible. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. Xavier was in the gym, the same gym, went home and it happened to him. And then I relived it again with Jawan. I said, God, it's you. This is bigger than me. The Xavion Dobson story is actually a story of possibility. This is his mother, Zenobia Dobson, and I'm glad to have you on the broadcast because I do believe that your story and your son's story is a story of possibility. So we, we catch up. We kind of went through all of the firsts oh, of yes. his life and um, how you transitioned. But also, he, he ended his life trying to save somebody, but he saved your life. He saved my right? life. Right, because he was your cause. He was, he was that something to reach higher for. He, he shielded you from you yes. until you became the you you were always intended to be. Yes. Right? So we were, we were talking about that. And thank you for, I know it's hard to tell that story, um, <clears throat> but I also know you want that story told because. It's time. Yeah, it's time. So you go to the cemetery. Yes. Um, and you said you went recently and you didn't cry because you needed to have a conversation with Xavier. Yes. <laughs> um, can we listen in? Well, I told Xavier that he has a visitor now. And he's a, he already knows that. His cousin, Jawan, passed away. And uh, I said, Xavier, wow, God is building the kingdom. I said, wow, you have a, a little cousin that's joining you now. I said, you make sure you protect him like you protected those girls. I said, uh, protect him in heaven because he's going to need you there. I said, uh, just welcome him in just as the Lord welcomed you. So you welcome Jawan, and y'all have an awesome time together. How does, how does Xavier let you know he hears you? The sun rises in the morning, and then it sets in the evening. And I look at the sun, and I say, son, you're shining. Hmm. Shine on. Well, when you did my radio show, people were amazed, amazed that your response to death was praise. Like, that was your response. 
a lot of people haven't been able to figure that out. Here's your space to explain it. How, how did you find the courage, the power, the strength to praise? Or maybe it's not courage. Maybe it's that's all I got is my praise. I don't know. Please. I just, I read a lot. I read scriptures. And they are so powerful to me. It's true. And, you know, I could be feeling happy. I could be feeling sad. But when I go to my scriptures, I know the word is the truth. So I'm like, wow, God, you have done so much. You know, you make the sun shine. You make the stars. You call your stars by name. And all that is you. And so... When I'm at my worst, I call on you. And he just give me that sense of peace when I call on him. And he showed me that he is who he is. And without him, there's no me. You, you are wearing an angel. Oh, yes. Tell me that story. Well, when Xavion passed away, <clears throat> My cousin, she gave me this angel. And um, another cousin of mine, she made the bow for Xavion. And she made a bow for Jawan. So I know they are angels. And so I'll be wearing it on my heart forever. Jawan was with you at the celebrity basketball game. And then he left and came to his tragic demise. And when you got the word that he was shot and killed, that, I don't even know where to begin to ask you about unpacking that. Wow. And what you wanna to say to this community about the seed of violence that is taking root. Jawan, <clears throat> wow. He was one of my favorites. He was special to my heart. But the experience that again God gave me with this child, not knowing that that was his last time on earth at a Fulton game, same as Xavion. Xavion was in the gym, the same gym, went home and it happened to him. And then I relived it again with Jawan. I said, God, it's you. This is bigger than me. It's bigger than I can imagine. I know it is because it's hard for me to understand it. But this violence, <clears throat> it has to stop. Two innocent children of the same family It's a purpose behind this. I know it is. He hasn't shown me yet, but I know it's one behind it. So through this tragedy, um, you have shown amazing strength or you have borne witness of the strength of God placed in you for this. Do you think that God has called you to do something with this? Absolutely. What do you think the calling on your life is? To speak to young women. To speak to families that struggle. What has he told you to tell them? To tell them that you can do all things. You just have to put your mind to it. In spite of your downfalls, you can rise up and be the woman that you are and go on with your life. You know, just be a woman. Hmm. Xavion saved those girls. Xavion saved you. He passed the baton to you. He said, go save those girls. Go save those women. Yes. I get it, I get that. Coming up. I can hear Xavion just saying, Mama, fight for me. 
stand up for me through all this. Um, how's Zach? Zach is, he's okay. What does okay mean? <laughs> he sure is something with me today. And I'm glad that he told me something that he really needs. Cause Zach really doesn't express how he's feeling. He would hold everything in. Xavion would express himself no matter what. But Zach would hold everything in. And today he told me that he just wasn't feeling well. He said, Mama, I'm just, I'm not, at, I'm not myself today. And I appreciate his honesty. Mm. I do. He finally told me that he just wasn't feeling well today. He misses his best friend. Oh, yes. And then, you know, he just, <sighs> he went to the funeral last night and, you know, he had to relive it all over again. All over again. All over again. We all did, our family. We all had to go through the same thing again. And he realized this morning that he just wasn't feeling himself. And I appreciate his honesty. Because now you know where and how you need to step up. Because if he masked that feeling, you wouldn't know. But then that puts that, yeah. Oh, yes. But, but you know what I'm thinking about? What, what's unique about all of this is, I mean, I mourn for the loss of your, your son and, and uh, his cousin. And you have shown a tremendous, a tremendous strength. It has to be God. Absolutely. I mean, I mean it, there's no doubt it has to be God because people don't respond to this kind of pain and tragedy the way you do without there being something beyond them. And Zach needs you. Yes. And it's, it's dawn on, dawning on me as we speak right now that Xavion's strength is the strength that you're using to get through this. Oh, like yes. it's Like it's, like he's counting on you to be there for his brother. And it's, and, and, and you're correct because I can hear Xavion just saying, Mama, fight for me. Stand up for me through all this. Be who you are and fight this. Fight this fight for me. I can hear his voice, see his face plain and clearly. Fight this good fight for me. Hmm. Well, I know that's exactly what you're gonna do. And, you know, our thoughts and our prayers and our faith is joined <clears throat> with you and your families, but I want you to know that you are profoundly loved, that you are called, and that all of this is going to work to bring you to a place as a woman where you can help people the same way that he did. I hate that tragedy is the, is the, is the gateway to that, but I'm glad that you're open to God using you in that way. And the thing I keep thinking about is when we get to heaven. Yes. And, if, and seeing Juwan and Xavion running. Yes. Pushing each other out of the way. <laughs> Cousins. And how excited we're gonna be to all be in fellowship together and to hear the Father and Xavion and Jawan say, well done. Because I don't think they could be any more proud of you for showing us what, what faith looks like. Because we don't, we don't live a hopeless existence. 
we know that um, if you don't know God, then death is a period. But if you do know God, death is a comma. Same scriptures last night. And I just want you to know that thank you for letting us bear witness to that and to keep using your life the way you're using it because your life is showing us that anything is possible and everything is possible. Absolutely. And uh, I want to give you the last word. Wow. Family first. My aunt and my mother, my sister, my brother, my sons, my cousins, family first. Over all that I've been through, I have a firm foundation of family and I love them all. I do, we just, we have a special bond that is unbreakable. We share so much love and laughter and we have a lot in common. Family first. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Proof positive that anything and everything is possible. We'll see you next time.